dogs just one of the main things we're working towards is um, that all dogs can enjoy a happy life free from the threat of unnecessary destruction. That's one of our most important policies and we believe wherever a dog is that they are in need of help, that, um, you know, that we can try and support them in any way. We do believe that education is really important, obviously, as well as the curative side of work that we're doing at the centres. Um, we do have education officers that go into schools now all around the country, so they will teach tomorrow's dog owners about responsible dog ownership and animal welfare. Um, and then we also do education work, um, sort of nutrient programmes, we'll do some television advertising. Um, we work with vets to subsidise vouchers, so yeah, we continuously try and educate as well as obviously rehome. I've always wanted to um, work with dogs. I've always wanted to help dogs that needed that little bit of extra help. Um, a lot of people will have seen the dogs on the website, uh, then come to the centre, fill out a questionnaire, and chat to one of our rehomers um, who will be able to match them up to the right dog for them. Um, once they've gone through that process, they then get to meet the, meet the dog and take it for a walk, see if they like it. They've got other dogs, introduce it to their other dogs. Uh, and they meet the dog a few times um, before taking the dog home. And the dog has all its vet checks before it goes home um, and has to be spayed or castrated um, before they go home. Um, and yeah, we then offer you know support for the rest of that dog's life. So if they have any problems after that, they can always come back to us. So this is our food room. You can see from the number of bowls, we usually have somewhere between about 60 to 75 dogs here. It depends obviously on how many of them are kennel together. Obviously they all need to be fed at least twice a day. We're really lucky we get lots of toys donated um, and a lot of them can be washed again and again. Um, lots of interactive dog games as well. What we do with these is we can actually hide a really nice high value treat like maybe a tiny bit of cheese or a little bit of hot dog and um, the dog basically has to use either their nose or their paws to try and get the treats out so and they get more and more complicated so they're, they're really good for keeping the dogs busy as well. Um, well, Cody. <laughs> He's lovely. <laughs> um, he's six years old. He's a Great Dane cross. What he's crossed, we're not too sure. Some people have said Labrador. Um, but he looks like he's got a bit of something else in him. We're not quite sure what it is. Um, he does like other dogs. He's just a little bit nervous about them. Um, and he doesn't like it when they get too close into his face or if they just to kind of surprise him. Um, but he's a big kind of monster. Yes, I know. <laughs> Um, so he loves to cuddle and he'll need someone that's going to be able to give him lots of that. He's come in as a stray from South West Scotland. We don't know if that's for definite whether he was a stray living on the streets or whether he'd been handed in or but we don't really tend to get a lot of background history about them. Um, so we kind of just had to work with what we know. He's been pulled off. But that's all I know about him really. He's been a project dog now for a good three, four months, I think. Um, and to begin with, he did just have to wear a muzzle, um, and then he had a bit of an incident, so he now has to wear it out and about. But it's not a bad thing, it's been able to give him like new opportunities, whereas before we had to be careful where we walked him. Whereas now we can walk him around with the dogs and not have to worry about it. And it's better for him because he gets better socialisation and he gets to see a lot more.